Hey everyone, this is Steve with Project Freedom. Today I'm going to be talking about the project, which is your camper van conversion and utilizing some project management techniques to get that job done. Now, I didn't really realize it when I first started in thinking about having a converted camper van of how big of a project it was really and how much it entailed. And it's really like building a small house in a way because you have to have skills for various different applications like plumbing, electrical, and everything else you'll need for building your camper van. And organization is important. Having a routine and keeping track of everything. If you're going to be building it from basically a bare van, you're going to have a lot of tools and a lot of materials to keep track of. And it's going to take you months to do it, depending on what you want to put into your van. Given that I had a ambitious goal and design for my van, it's taking me months, and I think it usually does for people. Sometimes it can take even years. I wanted to talk about organizing the project, staying on task, and I have a lot of business experience myself. I previously was a family lawyer and I owned my own law firm at about up to 15 employees. And I started that in 2011 and I ran that for seven years. I've also owned a kickboxing gym and a solar company as well. So I've had hundreds of employees at this point and lots of projects that I've planned and completed. And the camper van conversion is similar to those projects that I've already completed in my life and, and different in some ways as well. Essentially speaking, it's the, all projects are the same in the steps that you take. The skills that I've acquired and learned to build out my camper van, some of them are new, some of them I had a little bit of experience in. That's really the fun part in learning new skills and learning about electrical and plumbing and all those things. I really enjoy the learning process and improving myself. That's definitely the most fun part for me. When I started my law firm, I'd say the main difference between that project and this project is I'm doing this camper van conversion completely alone. And with the law firm, I did start alone. I, for about a year and a half, it was just me. I was a solo practitioner with no employees, but I was interacting a lot with my clients and the court and other lawyers, especially in getting their advice with the camper van conversion, it's completely alone. I'm not working with someone else in person. I don't have anyone helping me. And I'd say that's probably the biggest difference and probably the biggest challenge. And when you're working with other people, it can be a little easier to uh, maintain your motivation and your drive and stay on task. Whereas we, when you're completely alone, you have to have a lot of self-motivation and self-discipline in order to keep moving forward. It's not an insurmountable obstacle, it just makes it a bit more challenging. And fortunately I've done, I'm, I'm a self-starter and I always have been, and I've done a lot of things on my own at this point. So it's not something that is stopping me, but it definitely requires a little bit more effort to stay on task since I'm not really accountable to anyone but myself. And so it involves things like setting my own deadlines and sticking to them and taking them seriously. Obviously deadlines are very useful when it comes to completing projects for people without a deadline it can be very difficult to complete something in a timely manner so when i the camper van conversion project it takes a while and again that's another challenge where when you have a project that maybe you can complete in a week or two or maybe even a day you can see that completion and it really helps keep you on task and motivated when that completion date is far out, months out, it can be more challenging to keep the drive and motivation to push yourself through it. And I'll talk about that as well. But when I started my law firm, I knew it was going to take a while to make money and to be profitable and to grow it. And I had people at the beginning tell me, you're going to fail. You're not going to make any money. These people are always around. and one of my heroes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, calls these people naysayers. And he says, ignore the naysayers. And they're always there. And 
the more successful you are, the more you want to do with your life, the more it shines a light on what they haven't done in their life and what they're in the dreams that they're not going after. So it upsets them and they, instead of looking at themselves and changing that, they'll tend to just try to make you fail. So you might have those people. I definitely have those people in my life with a camper van. But at this point at 42, having done a lot in my life, I don't even, it's very easy for me to ignore them. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. I just say, thanks for sharing. And I don't even really have a need to respond whatsoever. I just say, okay. And then I just keep doing what I'm doing. The same was true with my law firm. I say I was a little more to that type of thing. This was 15 years ago or something, but I always use that the naysayers and what they said is fuel. And when someone tells me I can't do something, it's, I use that. I've always done this, but it's something that Michael Jordan does a lot, did a lot. If you watch the last dance about the bulls in the nineties, he talks a lot about taking things personally. And if people would tell him something, he can't do something to challenge him. He would use that to motivate himself. And it's a really great technique. And so I used all those things that people said about my law firm to, to, keep me going on the late nights and the long days and the weeks. And it's really, it's for me, it's like dumping gasoline on the fire. It's one of the, the greatest motivators for me. Now, with the camper van conversion, it's going to take a while as well. One thing about a project like this is most people, I've had a lot of people since I've been working on my van come up to me and tell me how cool it is, what I'm doing. And a lot of people say, I want to do that. I want to, I've thought about the van life. I've thought about converting a van. Now about 99% of these people that say this are never going to do it. And this is how most people live their lives. And so if you're going through this journey, you're one of the unique ones that, that you have an idea and then you do it. You don't just think about it or dream about it. And, and that should give you some motivation just in that. Most people are just too scared or not motivated enough to do something they really want to do or maybe they just aren't necessarily the ones making the decisions for their own lives maybe they're going on a path that maybe isn't their 100 percent choice i think that happens a lot when i was building my law firm i had to wear many hats just like i do in the camper van conversion i had to be the receptionist i had to be the lawyer i had to be the salesperson i had to be the manager of the office I had to be many things, many hats and many roles and jobs. And I l really liked that because I wanted to build up a firm that was large, that had all these employees there, but I knew I had to master all these roles before I ever built up the firm. I'm thinking about maybe doing camper van conversions after this as a business. I'm creating a lot of content for it. And I have to master all of these small roles and tasks before I can do that, before I have employees doing it for me or what have you. And that's the fun part for me. And there's so many small things you have to do that it requires that organization and that motivation to learn all those things over a long period of time. A lot of people start things and they just don't finish them. And for me, when I start something, I, I really, it's important for me to have the integrity to finish it. That if I start something, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to complete the mission. I'm not going to leave it half finished. And I think that's important that people have that as well in completing this project. When I first got out of law school, I was working in a personal injury firm, but I decided I didn't want to work for someone else pretty quickly. And I started my own. And at first I was practicing all kinds of different areas of law, which required me to learn all those. An interesting thing about law school is they don't actually teach you anything about practicing law or being a lawyer or anything about these areas of law you might practice in the county or state you're practicing in. So you have to learn everything, 100% of what you're going to do after you get out of law school. You just read these old cases and they say they teach you how to teach yourself and they teach you how to think like a lawyer, but they don't teach you anything practical whatsoever. And so I had to get out and learn all these areas of law. I eventually, after a couple of years, decided to practice family law, divorce and custody and order protection hearings exclusively, but that I was practicing several areas at first, which required me to learn all those things. And the camper van conversion is the same as that. In doing my law firm, I already mentioned this, I had to wear a lot of hats, learn a lot of things. 
I had to get the office space for myself, all the procedures for filing with the court, billing software, accounting software, computer software for running my practice, marketing, the website, internet, search engine optimization relating with clients, sales and closing, because as a lawyer running your firm, you're a salesperson, court decorum and behavior, networking, business growth, managing my personal life on top of all that. And with the camper van conversion, you're doing a lot of different things as well. You're with me, I'm also creating a lot of content. So it requires that I spend time on that and understand and learn that as well. So it's for me, this is really the fun part. I can't just do one thing in one boring job every day. I have to be overwhelmed and really challenged every day of my life with a big project and a lot of different tasks and roles. If not, I get extremely bored. And so having a big project like building my firm or, or the camper van gives me that. And it can't just be simple. I've got to be doing many things at once and have a lot on my plate to to keep interested and engaged. And I think people that are like that, that are like me, will really enjoy the camper van conversion process and they'll get it done. Now, a lot of people aren't like that. And this type of thing is definitely not for them. But if that's you, you're probably not listening to this podcast or watching my content at all. So that's just one example in my life of a big project I've done over time. After two, three years, my firm was quite profitable. I built it up. I had at the four-year mark, I had 15 employees. I had, I owned, my firm owned a large commercial building at that point in time that we had our office space in. I had hundreds of cases under my belt and I had three lawyers working for me. So it was, the process of getting there was small improvement every single day. And I worked seven days a week for about seven years. So it was every single day. It was my goal was just to have very small improvement every single day. And I knew over time that would add up to incredible improvement. I remember thinking back then that if I could just improve what I was doing 1% a day, that after years, I would be way ahead of everyone else. And, and that was true. After years, no one I had graduated law school with was anywhere near uh, where I was at. No one, was, no one my age was near where I was at in the Phoenix area. And it, it was because of my commitment and my daily dedication to improve just 1%. And I remember thinking and calculating, if I just do 1% a day, which isn't that hard, an improvement and moving things forward and growing, after years, I'm going to be 1,000%. And it just requires that dedication and that commitment to improve just a little bit every day. And the camper van conversion is very much like that. You're not going to get it done in one day. You're just going to get part of it done each day, especially if you're doing it alone or if you don't come from a lot of experience, especially for me, since I don't have a place to work on the van, that if I'm going to work on the roof, I have to drive it out to the desert, get my ladder out and stay on the ladder pretty much all day while I'm working up there. I don't have a scaffolding system or anything like that. And so it's just a little bit of progress every single day. And then you have setbacks, of course, and the setbacks can set you back days. And you have to be able to stomach that and keep moving forward. So it's similar in a lot of ways to what I did with my law firm. And the law firm is just one example of me doing that. I started, I built out a boxing gym from scratch. That was about 5,000 square feet. That was a long project that took months. And I've done several things like that. So I have a lot of experience with not converting vans at this point, but of setting my mind to something breaking it down into small parts and then completing it over time. And a lot of it is just because I don't give up. I don't ever give up. It doesn't matter what happens or what setbacks I have. I always move forward. I'm a boxer. I've been boxing about 15 years and I had a Mexican boxing coach and I learned that style. And one of the sayings and guidelines in Mexican boxing is always keep moving forward. And it really doesn't matter how tired you are, how hurt you are. And when you're in the ring, you move forward towards your opponent. You keep going in. You don't back away from your opponent. And it's a good analogy because no matter how many times you've been hit in the head and the body and how much you're hurting, you keep moving forward. You don't show your opponent in Mexican boxing that you're hurt, that you're tired. You keep moving forward. You keep that pressure on your opponent. 
and that's a great analogy for life. You always got to keep moving forward no matter what happens. And in boxing, as soon as you start backing away, you start getting fearful, you start running, then your opponent can sense that and it emboldens them. You can sense it and then you start to lose more and more confidence and that that's not good for boxing, not good for anything in life. So this idea of always moving forward no matter what is very important in everything in life. And how someone does one thing is how they do everything. And so how people do this camper van conversion is how they live the rest of their life. And there's nothing more true than that. How we do one thing is how we do everything. So when we talk about project management, it's a discipline that involves planning, executing, completing a project, and then circling back to check your work and then improving things. And that's a constant, never-ending cycle. And I have my undergraduate degree in business management, so I learned about this in class when I was in college. I've done it in real life. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those principles and how you can use them to complete your camper van conversion. So if we talk about project management, you basically have five steps, five stages, project initiation, project planning, project execution, project monitoring and controlling, and then project closure. And I don't really ever see a project as completely closed. It's a process that is ongoing. I'm a big fan of Leonardo da Vinci. Ever since I was a kid, I did a, a report on him, a, a speech. I can't remember what grade it was, but I've always been a big fan of his and obsessed with him and his life ever since then because He's a renaissance man, and, and that's always been my goal. He didn't just do one thing. He mastered many different things. He did more in his lifetime than most people will do in 50 lifetimes, and so that's always been extremely impressive to me. And it comes out of this way I've seen life that just doing one thing your whole life has always seemed just inadequate to me. And the interesting thing about da Vinci was that he worked on the Mona Lisa for 30 years. He didn't. He brought it along with him when he moved, when he traveled, and he would always make just little adjustments to it. For 30 years, he kept working on it. It was never done. And there's a lot of layers on the Mona Lisa, and he did a lot of things over the years as his skills grew and the way he saw the world differently and his painting differently. It, it was a never-ending process for him. It was never done. And this is a common attribute of the masters and the geniuses they good enough just isn't it can always get better and so that's a important process i think of anything that we do there's really no end to excellence in making things better so there's another idea i want to share with you guys that's always been important to me and has really resonated with me it's a japanese idea called kaizen kaizen is a business principle, but it can apply to life as well. And the Japanese have a talent for organization and processes and design. And when the Japanese auto industry started to really overtake the American car industry, Americans started to look into and research why the Japanese were dominating. And they found out things like, like the Kaizen approach, whereas with, at the time, Cadillac and Ford and the other American companies, they would complete something and then just keep producing it every year without a lot of improvements. Whereas with Toyota and Lexus, they would just keep improving it year by year by year. And the Americans learned this, and this idea has been implemented in a lot of businesses. And it's similar to the project management stage, as I said, but a bit of a difference is you always repeat it. It never ends. That's why I like the Kaizen approach. You can see you, number one, brainstorm, standardizing, two, measuring, three, comparing, four, innovating, five, standardizing, six, and then repeat the process. So when you, the difference in the Kaizen approach is that you always create standards, basically. You brainstorm your idea. You create a standard based on what you know. A standard is like a standard operating procedure for creating something. As you're implementing your standard, you measure it. 
and see how well it's working. You compare it to any comparison points you can have. If you can improve it, then you innovate improvements and changes. And then based upon the new changes and the better improvements and processes, then you standardize again and you just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. And so when it comes to the camper van conversion, you'll be doing a lot of things repetitively. And so you'll be hopefully doing this where you'll learn something, you'll make mistakes, and then when you continue to do it, you'll get better and better as you go. And you'll develop new standards, either written or just in your head of how to do things faster and more efficiently. And we all should be doing this naturally. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of a vision and a mission and values and how everything comes together when it comes to goals. Obviously, having a vision is extremely important. And I always say that humans are really chickens with their heads cut off without a vision. And one of my heroes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he talks constantly about having a vision. And I've always been amazed by Arnold because when he was 15, he was growing up in Austria in a relatively modest, poor household with, and at the time after World War II, people just didn't leave Austria. They didn't do great things. They just plugged themselves into the system and they just did something for their whole life like his father did. His father was a government worker and he just, Arnold didn't want that. And when he was 15, he just, he had a vision of being the greatest bodybuilder on earth, being a great actor, living in America, being an American politician. He, at 15, he decided he was going to do all these things and he would, he was obsessed with this vision. He kept thinking about the vision. He would see it every day. He'd make it more detailed and he moved his whole life around that vision. Now, most people, especially in modern times, don't have anything like this. They don't even think about the future. They're just reacting. They're just surviving. And having a vision for your life is important. Having a vision for your camper van is extremely important. And, and your van life, for what your van's going to look like, what your life is going to look like once you're on the road, what you're going to do, how you're going to be, how you're going to feel. The more you think about that, who's going to be with you maybe on the road, the people you'll meet. The more you think about your vision and the future and develop it in more detail in your mind to where you see it extremely clearly, you see what's going to happen, you see what you're going to do, you see what your van's going to look like, the more compelled you're going to be to move towards that, the more motivated you'll be to move towards that. Our minds are very interesting. Whatever you feed it, it will focus on and it will give you. And a lot of people feed their minds with not very good things <laughs> is a nice way of putting it. I was going to say uh, BS, but I decided against cussing. But a lot of people fill their minds with BS and from any, all kinds of sources. And it takes a lot of discipline to feed your mind with your vision all day, every day, and what your future is going to look like and channel and filter everything out. And Whenever you don't feel good or you don't have motivation, it's because you're not living your vision. You don't have your vision clear. You're thinking about what you don't have instead of what you could have in the future and what you will have in the future. It's very simple. And when you have a vision, your vision is like your giant thing, right? And a big part of completing a, a large project like that and getting to a vision is breaking everything into smaller, more manageable tasks, milestones, and writing down your goals. Now, without goals, without a vision, we just, we as humans, we just do what we're supposed to do. Just the default, right? We just go with the flow. And so we're living based on what everything outside of us is telling us to do. What society, what our family, what our parents, whatever. That's what happens when you don't have your own personal vision. Yeah, you move a place, but probably not that effectively and probably not exactly what you want. And so having your vision, writing down your goals, thinking everything through, planning it, tracking your progress, breaking things down into as small parts as possible. And so again, I mentioned that when you have a project that's going to take months, it can be hard to stay motivated. What you do is you break things out into small goals. If you could break it down into daily goals, even hourly goals. I'm going to complete this today on the van. And 
you plan it out, you go and complete it, you're going to feel good and motivated. And then you'll complete the next thing that day, next day. That is just far more effective and motivating than thinking, I'm going to complete my van. It's going to be, that's going to be too large and too hard to get your arms around to keep you motivated. Having these little things every day, every hour that you're driving towards completing will give you that motivation to keep going, especially if you're doing this work alone. And as humans, we're not necessarily meant to do things alone. Historically speaking, as human beings, we didn't do things alone. And so I think it can make it much more challenging. There's pluses and minuses to it. When you're alone, you get to do everything your way, but it can be a little more challenging. And so when you have a goal and you break down your goals, you have your objective of what you want to meet and the tactics, the activities you're going to take. And if you take a look at my build diary, you can see that I break everything down as to what I'm going to do each step. And part of doing my build diary and posting it every day on my website, campervanfreedom.com, is having that sort of catharsis or that cathartic and good feeling of completing something. I write it down, it becomes more real, right? Completed that, got that. I have to do a lot of these little things to stay motivated since I'm completely alone in this project. And I don't have anyone patting me on the back and saying, great job and attaboy. So I'm doing a little for myself, providing that for myself. Setting these little milestones every day or by the hour are very, is very important psychologically. We don't need other people to provide it for us. We can provide it for ourselves. And having that achievement and progress is really important when you're doing a large project. When I first started my law firm, no one believed in me. No one. Everyone tried to talk me out of it. And that was about them. It wasn't about me and my vision. It had nothing to do with me. It was about them, which what people say is usually 100% about them. They're projecting on you, right? People often, unless they've done a lot of work on themselves and training, they often can't really see things outside of their own lens of how they see the world. And so, of course, everything they're going to say is based on them. It's not you. Everything they see on you is just a reflection of themselves, right? And it takes a lot of work and introspection and probably a lot of trauma for them to get to a place where they can separate themselves and actually see you. And most people just are never going to do that. And the same with camper van. People are trying to tell me not to do it. Just, I don't know, just buy a van, man. Just go to go travel and hostels. And why are you doing all that? That seems like crazy. You're going out to the desert. You don't have a place to work on. You're, you're crazy. That, that's way too much work. And so again, eventually, as I had my law firm over the course of years, people started to notice, wow, he's doing something really amazing. And He's doing well. He has employees. He's growing. He's starting to get a reputation. Then I started to get the praise, right? But at first, ever, no one was praising me. No one thought I was doing, I was great or doing anything great. I had to do, I read some David Goggins book lately, and he said that when you do these things on your own, you're going to be very alone and very lonely. 99% of the work you're going to do on these things is completely alone. And you have to get used to that. You have to have a relationship with yourself where you do, you provide yourself with everything. You don't rely on external things to provide you with that appreciation, with that motivation, with that praise. It's nice, but you can't ever count on something outside of yourself to be constant. You can count on yourself inside of you, giving you that praise and that dedication and that attaboy, girl. And two, I've had some setbacks that have been difficult both of them involve my roof. I just, I, I went, I came from a, I've never had a, a vehicle with a roof this high. And I came from a, a low Mercedes sports car into this, the highest van basically on the market. And the first, I don't have, a, I was looking for a place, it was raining a lot in Phoenix in the winter, which was uncommon. So I was trying to find a place covered that I could work on my van. I drove into a parking garage and I can't really explain why I did this. <laughs> it can be hard to conceptualize your roof of your van and a, a concrete ceiling. But anyway, I, I found out the hard way when those two things met, the roof and the ceiling, and I did some damage to the roof. 
Now, this is the type of damage that would have cost thousands of dollars if I took it to a body shop. It set me back about three weeks, honestly. It was a lot of work to fix it. And I had to learn how to do body work. I had to learn how to do fiberglass, Bondo. And I covered it all with many coats of epoxy and paint and bed liner just so, to make sure it was going to be real solid going forward. And there was going to be no leaks, no rust, no issues. And it was a lot of work. I learned a lot doing it. And you would have thought I learned my lesson about my roof then, but no. I have been going through a drive through lately to get some food, and it's been fine. It's a high, relatively high drive through you, As you can see, if you look at fast food, most drive throughs are low. You're not going to get even a regular van under there. This one was high. And I'd, been, I'd gone through it a few times over the course of the last few months. It's near where I work in the desert. And... But then I installed, you'll see on my website, I installed the security camera mounts, which brought it up another foot and a half. And for whatever reason, it didn't really register in my mind that I had raised my roof a foot and a half and that this should be, there should be some type of alert when I try to go through this drive through again. It's, I wouldn't say I'm embarrassed saying this. I'm just angry at myself still because this was just a few days ago. And it took me about four days to build these security camera mounts and the LED lights I mounted up there. And I went through and I almost got through the drive through full, but then it took out two of the higher mounts. And when this happens, it's difficult. You're just like, it's, I don't know if you guys have ever broken a bone. I've broken several doing various activities. I remember I was in a road cycling race and there was a big accident with a bunch of people. And I went over my handlebars at like 35 miles an hour. And I put my hand out to break my fall just instinctively, and that broke my right wrist. And I knew it was broken immediately. I got up, and I, I couldn't use the wrist, and, which is what it's like when you break a bone. You just can't use it. It's just hanging there. And the pain, the physical pain was not the problem. It was the pain of knowing how long that was going to take to recover from. And I was a boxer, and I did all these things, and it took months. I don't know, like a year. And I had to get a plane to there. And so it's like that feeling when I damage the roof. It's like, that's going to, that's a lot of wasted time of building that. But now I got to fix it. So it's going to set me back. And so a lot of things like this happened in my law firm as well. When I was building it, I remember drafting pleadings or doing things and then like word crashed and I lost it all and it didn't save or things like this happen in life where you do a lot of work on something maybe over the course of days or weeks or months or years. And then it just, something happens where all that work just disappears. You're set back. And these can be some of the most challenging things in life where you feel like you've lost time. It can be hard to dig yourself out of these holes. And this is a relatively small hole. But the point of this is that when, the, when this happened, when it happened initially with the roof and the security mount, it, there's like a, there's like a, desire to get depressed about and wallow, right? Oh my God, I can't believe it. When am I going to get this all done? I can't believe I'm sabotaging myself. And those are the times where you really have to be strong and push through. I don't have anyone giving me pep talks. I don't have a therapist. I don't have anyone being like, it's no big deal, man. It happens. But no, I tell people and they think it's funny. It is funny. It's so ridiculous. It's funny that I've done this twice now with my roof and I can laugh at it. It's just silly. And sometimes I'm really laughing at myself and doing these stupid things, but it's just, you just put your head down and you keep moving forward, suck it up, move forward, keep completing. Now I lost several hours fixing this about five hours. Fortunately, it was an easy fix. I actually made a video about it. You can see it on my website and on YouTube, I made a video about, I videoed the damage and then I showed you what I was going to do to fix it. Fortunately, the 8028 extrusion itself, which was the the main structure of these mounts was not damaged whatsoever. It was, I know it was a learning process too, because I realized that when at no time in the van is anything going to, no concrete is going to come into contact with my aluminum extrusion framing. Like, so when concrete comes in contact with it, like it did with the mounts, it's good to know that the extrusion itself cannot be damaged by that. The extrusion itself was completely fine. It failed at its weakest points, which it always will do, which is the connectors 
that are connecting these together. And, but you could see the strength of it even then. It, that you could see I, with all the bolts into the T-nuts in the channels of the extrusion, I had used uh, thread lock liquid, lock washers, flat washers. And I really tightened these up. And so you could see how strong it was. It didn't rip the bolts out or the T-nuts, it actually ripped the metal connectors, the angle connectors that I made. It ripped through those. And so that's, that's never going to happen inside the van. Nothing is ever going to put that much force. Even in a car accident, it's not the same force as something physically colliding with it that's concrete, right? The stopping force of an accident isn't going to do that. So it made me realize how solid this stuff was. And you, when you have something on the roof like that and you're driving, you worry about it, especially it's holding cameras and electronics, right? So it was a good learning process. And I learned how to fix it. I got some content out of it. And so a lot of times when you're completing these big projects, you have to really maintain mental discipline. Like you've got to see the silver lining and everything. You've got to be positive. You've got to keep your eyes on the prize and the vision. If you start going down that path of feeling sorry for yourself and then it's a bad path to go down. I saw this a lot when I owned my solar company and I ran door-to-door teams. And most of the people that I was hiring were people that are about 18 to 25 and without higher education. And it's an entry-level job in a lot of ways. You can make a ridiculous amount of money doing it, but the basically the gap between the people that make all the money and the ones that don't is huge. About in door-to-door solar sales, about 95, about 5% make all the money, 95% make almost nothing. And so it's, it's not a hard job. You just walk around neighborhoods, you talk to people. It's not physically demanding. And where people struggle with it is the mental game. And that was always what appealed to me about doing door-to-door sales is the mental discipline and toughness that you gain through it. And when people stay in that job, which isn't often, I've hired thousands of people to work for me and a very small, the attrition and turnover rate is amazing in that business, like 95%, 5% will stay a month, maybe even less than that. It's, I've done thousands of interviews, thousands of applications and, and it's such a funnel, like the one that actually stays and makes money, it's like. For the people that apply, it's like one in 500, maybe one in a hundred that interview, one in 50 that interview. So it's, and the reason why people don't stick it out and stay, even when they don't really have any prospects, they don't have a law degree. They're not, they don't have experience. They don't have prospects of making any more money, even when I'm paying them like a base, right? The reason why people don't stick it out is the mental game and the rejection and in sales and especially in this door-to-door sales, you're going to have to get 99 rejections to get one sale. You'll probably have to get 499 rejections to get one sale. And, and that's just the way it is. And people have trouble accepting this. They think they can go out and it's going to be easy, right? A lot of them have never really faced any type of real rejection in their lives. They've never really faced people maybe verbally abusing them a bit and reacting angrily to them and such. And So it's that mental game of getting the rejections of having those failures and just moving forward anyway, and not having them. The goal is just to not even have them register, just keep, just ignore them and move forward. And, and when these things happen with the van and they will happen in your camper van conversion process, you'll have setbacks. I remember I was talking with a guy, I was looking at his van because I thought about buying a converted van by someone else until I decided against it. And I was talking to him about the process and he said, you're going to have some bad days. <laughs> and that was extremely true. When you're doing your camper van conversion, especially when you haven't done one before and you don't come from a background of doing things like this, you're going to have some bad days. You're going to have a lot of bad days. And a lot of it's just learning on the job and making, learning from your own mistakes. It's, there's not enough content out there on the internet in the world to learn everything. It's, there's actually given where the internet's at, there's a very small amount of content on converting a van and a lot of stuff. You're just going to have to do it and find out, mess around and find out the hard way. And it's what you got to just keep moving forward. You have bad days. And when you have this vision and you make, you get obsessed with your vision in the future, when things go wrong, it can be, you might 
get a little emotional about it, but you might get upset about it because it's, you've made it a big part of your life, which I think is really essential if you're going to do this in any timely manner. You do have to become obsessed with it. There's just so much to learn and so much to do. You can't just do it an hour a day. You won't be done for years. And especially with me, I, got, I can't just drive out to the 30 minutes, drive out to the desert, spend an hour, then drive back. Now I got to put a 12 hour day in at least. So let's look at the next step. You got your initiation, your purpose, your scope, what you want to complete, planning stage. Now, when initially I didn't really do this, and I'm more of an action guy. And I was reading David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me, great book. And he's an action guy, and he, from my, he's an extreme version. I'm not saying I'm like David Goggins at all, but. I can relate to his mentality. And so he entered into a hundred mile race. That's like mo way more, that's three marathons, by the way, or four or five, whatever it is. And for a charity for, I think it was families of, of fallen soldiers. He's a Navy SEAL. And he didn't train at all for the hundred mile race. He wasn't even doing cardio weeks before it. And he just did it. That's just like a bad idea. And he's so crazy that he wouldn't give up even though he was, his body had fractures and he was going to die. He was so broken, right? And so I tend to take action in things. And some people are like, they have analysis paralysis. They're not action people. They're going to plan forever and not actually do it. I tend to be more on the side of just taking action without planning. But given my situation where I don't have a place to work in the van, I had to take in the desert. I was forced into planning more. And, and it was really a good thing. It was difficult because I'm... I have some impatience, but I used a program called, I did a lot of research and I used a program called SketchUp, which is a CAD software. There's a lot of different CAD softwares. I think SketchUp is used because you can get a free version and it's relatively easy to use, relatively user-friendly. There's, there's definitely a learning curve with SketchUp. You're going to have to put days and weeks in to really get the hang of it, but I planned everything out in SketchUp. And this was part of my planning process. Not only did I write down everything I wanted and visualized it, but I actually built it in SketchUp. And I have that on my website under the design tab. Here's a little graphic with SketchUp. So SketchUp, you basically have a 3D plane and then you move inside there and build your van out. It's time consuming. No doubt about it. It took me weeks to build my SketchUp design and it's, you have your learning curve as well. It's not a fast process, but there's really no other way for you to build like an accurate model of what you're going to do. I'm having some trouble doing a screen capture here. I'm having some trouble doing a screen ca capture. So I'm just going to bring up that picture and use that. So basically once you're in SketchUp, you can download it for free and check it out. A nice thing is that you can, I found a model that was semi-accurate for my Ford Transit high roof extended. And so I basically built it out from that model. If you go on my website under design, you'll see it. You can click on it without SketchUp to see my model and check it out. And likely for your van, especially if you have a Sprinter, you're going to be able to find models in the 3D warehouse of SketchUp. Or you can find them online if you're using another program. There's several pro CAD programs. There's AutoCAD, which is like the original. There's Adobe Dimension. There's many different ones. You can search Google or ChatGPT will tell you what all the programs are. And you can see that I, I build it based, it doesn't have the whole van in my model, but it has the framing and the important parts. And that's important. I did, you can request the CAD drawings from Ford. And I don't know if you can get them for their Sprinter or for the ProMaster, but Ford is very about giving these out. And they're not really on the internet. There's a place you can buy them on the internet, but it's like $700. It's crazy. And I attempted to do, make these models myself and they have apps on your phone where you can make 3d models, but they're not accurate. You'd have to have equipment that's thousands of dollars to get a real accurate model of your van. It's going to take a lot of time. So I was able to find one that I used. I don't think it's a hundred percent accurate, like to the inch or to the millimeter. But it's still helpful in knowing pretty close as to what size I need things and, and how things are going to be and look and how they're going to fit in my space that I have in the van and on the roof. And 
Ford's interesting. I don't know what Mercedes and Ram are like, but I did. Re- there's a form you can request the cab, but it's really only for like professional up hitters. I think a few weeks, like a month later, they emailed me. They sent me some files, but it's not the complete CAD drawings. I think it's just some of the pieces of the van. I haven't really checked them out because I've been building. I finished my SketchUp design. That's a very useful process of designing your van in SketchUp. It's going to be time consuming, but you'll be able to really think about what you want and what's going to fit in there, which is important. So we have our project project planning breaking your work into a a structure project execution stage three so having a a daily routine while you're working on your van is very important just like you would with the job or going to school you have the goals and tasks that you break down in small parts like i said but also having a routine and a commitment to work on the van is going to be very important you're going to have to commit to say eight hours a day five days a week or whatever you want to put into it. I end up working a lot more than that. If you go on my website in the diary, you'll see I'm stating how much time I'm putting in. Also a website like Far Out Ride, they have a lot of guides and such, and they tell you the time. And at first when I was reading the Far Out Ride guides before I started all this, I was like, wow, that's taking them a long time. I'm going to be faster. Nope. Nope. It's coming out to a similar time. I think with my interior van heater my diesel heater i think it took them 25 30 hours and i'm like i'm gonna get that done faster no it ended up taking me about 20 to 30 hours to do that and there's just things that come up that take a bit longer especially if you're working like under the van or on the roof there's always something that's going to break or not go to plan i was for my heater i had to get under the van and i had these plastic hard plastic ramps that were not cheap i bought on amazon that were weighted for twelve thousand pounds even though my van's five thousand pounds and they just got crushed while i was working on the heater and so that that adds time of course but having that execution having that routine is it takes a while to build and when it comes to a routine having building up momentum is extremely important for human psychology When you first start working on the van, long days, it's going to be tough. But the more weeks you put in that you're working on the van, it ends up getting easier and easier because we as humans, we just adapt everything. We normalize and habituate everything. We have it. That's really our superpower as a species on this planet is we just can adapt to really any environment and doing anything. Whereas all the other animals on the planet have to live in a specific environment doing specific things. We just can adapt to anything where it's incredible. And, but you can't take too much time off. I'm at 42, especially when I'm working on the roof or underneath the van, my physical body from working several days row gets to the point where I have to take time off in my mind. When I was younger, like in my late twenties and early thirties, I didn't have to do this. I could put in 12 to 16 hours a day building time at my law firm, sitting in a chair and I could push through it. Now at 42, it gets to a point with my physical body. Like my hands get numb, my mind, I I just don't have the energy that I once had. And that's, you're younger in your 20s, you really don't have an excuse not to push through and do long days. Because I can just, the difference in in me as to my late 20s and early 30s is like, it's big, unfortunately. (laughs) And then I, I just have to add more and more caffeine to compensate. Whereas when I was that age, I didn't drink any caffeine and I had all this energy, right? Now I got to have five cups of coffee per day to keep going and thank God for caffeine. But building that momentum, what I do, and I think when you do need a day off, you take a day off for your mind, for your body, but you don't want to, I don't believe in really taking two days off in a row because then it can, your mind, your mind starts to adapt to whatever you're doing. So if you take one day, two days, three days off, it starts to adapt to the laziness again, and then it's harder to get back into it. And anyone who's had a lot of success in their life been a business owner they know this i remember a judge that was presiding over my cases i was talking with him once and he's yeah i don't take vacations i just keep working and this is just because especially when you're doing a lot and you're succeeding and having a lot of progress and success when you take a vacation it really just puts you in a completely different mode and then when you come back to work it's hard so an important thing to do while you're executing is not jumping around to different projects now at first 
even though with all my experience, I was doing this. There's just so many things I want to do with my van. There's out of the big project, especially with electronics, which I'm really into, there's, there's a hundred mini projects and I kept jumping around. At first I started, you know, and sometimes when you do these jumping around, it turns into more than what it really should be. I, with my van, I wanted to put bed, black bed liner on the bottom where the plastic is. I didn't plan on painting the whole van. <laughs> but I ended up putting bed liner in the whole van. And that took a long time. That took weeks. It's not really an essential part of completing the van to live in. I could have just left it be and focused on the things that, that I needed to complete, like the electrical system, the water system, the bed, to live in it. But I, I spent weeks on just painting the exterior of the van. And that was not a good use of the time because there, there's also, when you're, when you're looking at the van and to complete, there's going to be certain projects that you're excited about and certain projects you're just not excited about. There's going to be an emotional pull towards certain van, certain parts. And at first, the aesthetics of the van, I had an emotional pull towards them. I'm like, oh, I want to make it look cool, right? Now I don't care at all. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this thing done and focusing only on the essential things. And I can complete other things later once I'm on the road. I'm planning on leaving and, and doing work on the road as well and bringing my tools and materials and such. And so I got drawn into, and, and I can, I'll probably, I'm going to do more content on painting the exterior of my van with bed liner, but it ended up being way more than I initially wanted. And some things happened where I sort of necessitated that I just cover the whole van in bed liner. It's also good for me because I tend to, I'm rough on things. So with the bed liner, especially the, the black bed liner, which I've sprayed on my whole van, it's, if I run into anything or anything smacks the van, or once you have bed liner on the whole van, several coats of it, the dents aren't even going to show and you're not even going to, the minor dents you might get aren't even going to be there, right? Because that stuff's more tough than what you buy the van at. And then... If anything does smack the van, all you got to do is just spray some bed liner on it. Boom, easy fix, right? It's textured, it hides pretty much any blemishes. And so that's good for me, especially even now when I take it in the desert, like I'm like whacking into trees and bushes and it's slamming into the van. And I know I'm going to be off road and smacking into tree branches, especially since I'm building. Now I've decided to build the roof up to about 12 feet because I'm going to be putting some storage on top. And then putting the panels on top of that, I t thought about doing a trailer. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to pull a trailer. So I'm going to create more storage on top of the van. And so I'm going to be smacking into trees, right? Because <laughs> I'm going to be taking this thing off road. And so the bed liner is good in the end. It's just maybe I would have done that on the road instead of doing it while I was still in Phoenix. But it's important that you just have the discipline to complete what you've agreed with yourself to complete for me i'm really excited to get inside the van and, and build out the aluminum framing because i just love the aluminum extrusion for whatever reason and but i'm still on the roof right now because i got to get the electrical system done i got to get that storage system on the roof done now i got to get everything in there i got to basically drill all the holes that i'm going to bring into the van before i even put the flooring in and the paneling in and the insulation because there's no point in putting the flooring in and then drilling through it later right? It's going to be harder to access. So I got to complete everything outside the van before I even think about going inside the van. But that's essentially what I want to do. I want to get inside the van. I want to do the insulation. I want to build the framing, the bed. And I'm not super excited about the roof right now, but I got to get it done. It's also more challenging work. I'm up on a ladder all day. I'm using my hands, to, these little electrical wires. And when underneath the van, that's like a nightmare. <laughs> when you don't have a lift, and you're, you're looking up all day, it's, it's no bueno, but you got to get it. I got to get it done. And I still have an undermount AC I got installed before I even get inside the van. So yeah, you got to keep your discipline. By the way, if you guys are listening to the podcast, you can go on YouTube and easily find this video. You'll see all the things I'm referencing in the video. Project monitoring and controlling. So yeah, monitoring your progress. If you have goals and a goal really is worthless unless it's really specific about what you're going to complete, how many you're going to complete, complete, what's the due date, when you're going to complete it exactly. If you're just like, yeah, I want to complete the roof, that's not really a goal. That's just like a pipe dream. When you break the roof down into its various parts, like with me, I have goals for 
when am I going to install these solar panels? When am I going to install the LED lights? When am I going to finish my PVC electrical wire conduit system? When am I going to do my storage system? You got to have goals and then like, this is the amount of time I'm going to spend on this. Otherwise it's, we as humans, we just tend to get lackadaisical on completing things. It's just the way we are. So when you have that set goal, that time you keep yourself accountable. So that's the monitoring to controlling that you're going to do. Project closer. So obviously I don't think I'll ever be done with my van, honestly, because even when I'm on the road, there's always been little things I'm be doing. It, it, the scope of what I want is just too large. I'll probably sell it or start building a new van before I ever complete everything I want. And I'll get into more of what I'm going to be working on in other content, but it's, but that's part of it for me. That's part of it. It's not, I just read David Goggin's second book, Never Finished. And it's a common thread. If you read biographies, if you read self-development books, it's a common thread be between all successful people. They're just never finished. There's no finish line in life. You can't live long enough to get there. So it's always a, a, a constant improvement process, constant building. Just like I said with Da Vinci, Da Vinci died before he, in his mind, finished the Mona Lisa. We think it's like the most famous piece of art in the world, and we think it's a masterpiece, but with him, it wasn't. It wasn't done yet. It could get better. And only the really high-powered people, the, the ambitious people, will understand this concept. And they really get it fundamentally and theoretically, philosophically. People that don't, that aren't super ambitious, they always have the same response to this. They say, if I'm never satisfied and it's never done, then I'll, I won't be happy, right? I want to be happy. And they, what they're missing is that happiness is not a destination. All the wisdom of the ages states that. Happiness is not something you can reach. Happiness is in the journey. And because life is a journey, and so the journey of completing the van, the journey of always improving it, that's where you can find happiness in yourself, right? Happiness is never a destination you're going to reach. There's a lot of quotes on this, but they go, if happiness is your destination, you're never going to be happy because you're never going to reach a destination in life. It's just a constant journey. So that's really the way the, the camper van is. I'm going to learn a lot. I definitely plan on doing more camper van conversions after that, after this maybe as a business, maybe just personally. And the second one I do, of course, is going to be a lot better and easier than the first one. The first one's the guinea pig, right? So that's the, that's what I have to say when it comes to camper van conversions, project management. And you can really utilize a lot of these skills and tools that I've given you today to assist yourself. There's a lot of software you can use too. There's a lot of software out there to do project management where you can, it'll, basically what it does is it will help you break things down and organize things into small pieces and it can help you set goals and track your progress and you can put images and all kinds of stuff in there and, and keep track of everything if you're so inclined to do that. I don't necessarily, I write things down, but I don't necessarily need to do all that. It's going to take a lot of time to do that, but some people are inclined to do, a lot of the way I track my progress is through putting out the content that I'm doing and I just use Google Keep, which is just a simple note-taking program to track my goals and everything. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. And But by doing the content, I'm really tracking my progress. I'm talking about it. And I'm trying to help other people that are doing this, but also I'm solidifying things within myself about what I'm learning. I'm teaching things that I'm learning. I'm talking about it. So it's solidifying things more and more about how I'm approaching all of this. Like I said, if you are listening to the podcast, you can find this video easy. Just find my channel on Project Freedom on YouTube. I'm also on other, all the other social media sites, mostly TikTok. And if you have any questions, please make comments. Please share your experiences with your own camper van conversion and via social media or YouTube or whatever it is. And I'd love to hear more from people that are listening to this. I'll definitely respond to your comments. And I'd like to establish a community around the content and we can all help each other and also subscribe to the podcast, YouTube, and follow me on social media. Hope you guys have a great day.